uh, may I know how many folks are actually from the product background? Is there anyone who is not from the product background or maybe is an aspirant? Folks, uh, today's session is all, it's going to be very interactive. So please uh, yeah. uh, keep dropping any questions you have. And as Pranshu mentioned, questions specifically around who are uh, who has a product management background today. Or just drop in a line of what background do you have so that we have a better picture of uh, like, you know, uh, what our audience is today. Perfect. We have someone from marketing looking to move to product. Uh, we have aspirants also. Great, great. So we'll, we'll try to keep this session as interactive as we can. Uh, the last session also we had was a, uh, was a, for a nice interaction between a lot of people who were from a different domain also, from product people, folks also. Uh, there were a couple of aspirants also. So, okay, if we have Saif who is new to product role. Okay, great. Okay, so I think let's start and we'll keep discussing a lot of things uh, in this session. Uh, we'll keep this session more of informal and casual so that we can connect dots. Uh, and I'll try to keep things very simple for all of us so that you doesn't feel like, okay, this... Uh, this whole session is going on a very uh, jargon oriented uh, way. Okay. So, okay. So before, uh, before we start, uh, how many of you have worked in any product? Uh, okay, you are in DevOps also, you have worked in finance also, any product you have worked with or any product team you have directly or indirectly worked with. I think let me share my screen first. Okay, we have okay, HRMS, okay, HRM and ATS. Okay, great, great, great. So, okay. So let's start with product market fit. So this session is all about product market fit. Um, before product market fit, first understand what is a product so in so we had a couple of uh, earlier sessions with pm school also where we have discussed about product how to derive how to derive with a problem statement how to create a product how to define a problem statement there are several exercises and steps so you can go and watch those particular sessions at pm school uh, so that you can actually come to a uh, come to a state where you understand uh, product and other things uh, so in this whole session, we'll speak about two things primarily. One is product. Uh, when I say product, generally all the companies are, all the companies, when I say product-based companies, uh, companies like uh, Swiggy, Zomato, uh, you can say any banking application. So for company, these applications or these product, these are products. Okay. So if you're absolute, suppose I am Zomato, I am Zomato. I have a mobile application. I have a website, right? My customer come and interact on that website and on that app. For me, that app and website are product in a very layman language. Okay. If the experience of that product is nice, my customer will stay. If the experience of that product is not good, my customer will simply go away to a different, uh, maybe different competitor. Let's say Swiggy. Right. So Swiggy and Zomato are just an example uh, so that we can relate. Okay. So one, we have created a product. Second, there is a product market fit. Product market fit in simple words means we'll discuss more about the product market fit in this whole session. But I just, I just wanted to create a base so that so all of us, we can actually connect the dots in subsequent slides. Product market fit is a state where market where market actually adopt your product in very simple terms where market adopt your product and your product is properly accepted by your customers. When I say market, market simply means customers at the end of the day, whatever we are creating is for our end customers who are actually using that particular product. So that is in a very simple term is a product market fit, how to reach there, what to do, what not to do. There is a there is a cycle of there's a there are, there are cycle of processes, frameworks, etc. We'll discuss about all of those things in this session. But just to 
just to create a single line of understanding this is about product market fit so as i mentioned there are several companies who are product based companies and for 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 every company there is a product which is actually a usp of that company what uh, with respect to the services which they are serve so if it is an hrms it is a product because that company who is actually uh, giving hrms services their customers and their staff will be using that particular hrms software if you have used a billing software uh, if a company is uh, selling a billing software billing software is also a product for that company in very layman terms it depends on what kind of services uh, that company is offering and what are the usps of that particular product okay basis the adoption is uh, been generated at a customer end so uh, so before we start uh, a very uh, quick introduction from my side i am a senior product manager at freecharge which is an access bank subsidiary uh you can find me on spotify also uh, i i do a lot of product related podcast at spotify with the name of podcast p r o d c a s t podcast uh lately i had a i had my own service based venture also served uh, more than 300 customers across the globe i have worked in uh, diverse industries fintech edtech uh food tech health tech etc so i understand from a product point of view this is my learning uh once you start working with different different industries you start understanding the pain points of every industry and you try to deliver things uh, you come very much close to your customer also at the same time customer who is actually using it so this is about myself uh so before we start there are some basic things which we all know but let's start discussing from low hanging fruit so that we can actually start connecting so 9 out of 10 products fail oh so i have startups also striked out here because if your product is a hit your company or startup will be a hit okay so suppose i have created so let's say i have uh, created a mobile uh, mobile application uh, and uh, let's say let's say it's a nightlife and party application where you can actually come and search for nightlife uh, restaurants uh, clubs etc right and there is a whole booking experience but the experience and the adoption of that application is not good in simple terms customers are not liking that that whole thing will fail right 66% of these product or of the or these companies you can say they drastically change their original plan so suppose i started from creating a uh nightlife club based mobile application but i ended up uh creating a let's say e-commerce application let's say okay so generally there is a shift of shift of idea also shift of original plan also and maybe maybe that e-commerce or whatever i have created it might help me to grow and there might be a there might be a version of that application there might be a scenario where it, where it reaches a customer adoption okay so it's a journey product market fit is just not a stage it's a journey uh, so for a product or a startup success there are three main pillars and these are very important core pillars uh, one is your product if your product is really really good then you will be a hit because what product is product is something which actually solve a customer's existing problem right if you are actually solving a problem uh, then and it is a and it doesn't mean that you are solving a bigger problem or a smaller problem uh, you can start with one problem and then you can slowly slowly scale second is the market market is which industry you are serving to right uh, what is the competition right what are, what is the growth of that industry right what is the penetration of uh, penetration in that industry right what is the adoption of that industry right whether the competitors are there in that industry or not right for example you have created a uh, so let's say you have picked a commoditized market let's say right of apparels let's say and you have created an e-commerce application you will take your time but if you have created something into a different industry where you are a first where you are a first mover let's say where the competition is less low or less no no or less sorry right uh, then it depends on market and then third pillar is people people are 
those people are specifically those customer who are going to use this particular platform or particular product so if all these pillars are fitting together then only a startup or any pro any product company will actually thrive because this is the validation that yet you, yes you are on a stable position in terms of adoption uh, your product is great uh, you are in a great market uh, where the people are where customers are there and third is if people are actually adopting your product so this whole process uh, gives you a green check then then so we have spoken about failed startups right failed start so startup is just a word uh, uh, why i am again and again uh, using startup as a word here because if your product as a product person if your product fail it directly impacts the uh, the plan and the uh, uh, vision and the mission of the company right so top 20 reasons we have uh, for startups to fail right first the top the first reason is no market need you are creating a particular prop you are you are picking a problem which is not a problem right so you are actually building something for for which there is no demand right then there are certain use cases where uh, you have created something but there is but the company uh, ran uh, out of cash etc right uh, you are not able to get right team to build a product you have a wonderful idea you are a wonderful product manager but at the end of the day you should get a right team to build right if the team is not right again a single person cannot go much longer right you have to go with team right then uh, get out com uh, competed right then pricing issues pricing and costing issues uh, pricing and costing issue is something which is very very common and uh, important aspect uh, com when i say common in india there is a lot lot of competition at the pricing right if you are selling anything for let's say 1000 rupees there will be someone who will be selling the same thing for let's say uh, 999 also right that 1 rupee also will make a difference somewhere right then important things are user unfriendly product you have created wonderful things but the experience and the user friendliness is not there right so any any product which is not user friendly adoption is really really tough right a uh, product without a business model you have created a product you have everything but there is no business model out of it, it means that at the end of the day your product is not running or not actually generating any revenue there is no business model right poor marketing is something you have created a wonderful product but your marketing is poor people are not aware about your product people have maybe pre people have a vibe of your product but that vibe is not as per their expectation so that fitment is also not there you ignore customers right you say okay boss i have created i have i will create uh, a product for a certain set of customers i will not i will ignore majority of customers i will create a product for very small niche of customers right where customer give you feedback also but you ignore right then then we have other other things also where uh, you lose you lose focus also right disharmony right pivot and pivot gone bad so pivot gone bad means uh, you thought now it's a good time to try new things right and suddenly you let's say you change industry uh, this is the same thing which we spoke about where we have spoken about uh, i started with a nightlife application but i ended up doing a e-commerce thing in mid i pivoted right but if the industry adoption was not there right again that whole idea will get will go on trash right so that is also thing then lack of passion you started something but you are not passionate about that you just started because you just have to start it right then there are few things that fail geographical expansion these are small small things uh legal challenges are also there where you are creating something which is already there in the industry and which is legally bound suppose you are actually creating you are utilizing any anyone's ip intellectual property right and then there are a lot of troubles happening so these are top 20 startup failure reasons uh if you see on the top we have certain we have two three reasons which is which are revolving around your product only no marketing need not a right team right pricing issue user friendliness right no business model if your product core proposition is good your product experience is good 
uh, your product is actually solving a real life problem, then your product will move ahead. Else these things, so not, today only you start uh, analyzing any product which you are actually, uh, which you, you, uh, you use particularly, right? You see these factors, right? They will solve particular need, right? They have a right team, right? They offer services in really, really competitive prices like Netflix, right? Sh like Shopify, right? Like Amazon Prime, right? So you have, and we have wonderful experience. Yep, let's move forward. So we have three phases. Uh, I've kept it really, really simple. So we have three phases in a product. One is product solution fit. Second is product market fit and then you scale. So let's understand this first. Then we'll go into specific things. First is product solution fit. Product solution fit means this is a problem. This is this is the problem which I have validated and this is an actual problem. And my pro product solve this problem properly. If that pro problem versus solutioning thing fits and this particular product is acceptable by customer also it means customer is also saying yes this is the problem i am facing and your product also solve my thing right then it is for then the first step is product solution fit that okay boss whatever product i have created it solves problem so product solution fit is there right there is nothing my product is solving extra then second day now once this stage is crossed then you come to a product market fit okay Till product market fit, you have to validate learning. Okay, you focus on validating your learning. So when, when I say validating my learning means I have created a version A of my product. In, I have created a solution also of version one, let's say uh, version A, right? My customer gives me feedback, hey, boss, in this version A, if you can do this also, it will create more impact. It will, if you will create this also, so user feedbacks are very important. So in this whole process, until we reach market fit, we focus more on learning and we experiment pivot. So experimenting pivot doesn't mean that you have to suddenly change your whole product, right? Exp experimenting, experimenting pivot simple means that, okay, I have tried with my solution this, I will keep 90% of the model same. I will do 10% 10, 10 of experimentation where I might try something into a pivot, right? That doesn't impact my whole product. So this is second aspect. Product market fit is where when once you are confident with the product solution fit, you give this to your customer, you get the feedback from customer and customer says that boss, yes, this is the product which solves my problem. Just like Zomato and Swiggy. My problem was I was not able to do online ordering for my food. I got an app or I got a platform where I can search restaurant, right? This was, let's say this was my problem statement as a customer, right? Now I can, I have this app, I can search uh, restaurants nearby. I can see the menu. I can simply do order, right? And this I can do on a repeat basis because this is my actual problem. I cannot go to restaurant every time. I'm in an office, right? I'm traveling, right? I am at a client meeting. Uh, I need food, right? I will simply do an order. So this is the phase where customer says that, okay, boss, this is an acceptable product and I am ready to give premium also for this product. Premium means anything which a uh, product earn as a business. Okay. Uh, in very layman terms, in a very layman terms, anything, anything which actually your product generate as a revenue. Right. We'll speak about, we'll speak about this more in the next phases. Once this product market fit is sorted, right? Then you think about scale. Okay. Now my pro customers are actually liking this product. Now as Zomato, I will, or Swiggy or any platform, I will start adding new features or maybe I will start working on scaling and expansion. Today I was only working in Delhi. Now I will start scaling in different cities also. Let other city people also uh get these kind of services right then i will go in different cities like uh let's say i i go to Ahmedabad also i go to lucknow also uh, i go to different states also right uh, i go to mumbai also maharashtra also i touch there right more customers so now the focus is more on growth once the adoption is there you focus more on growth and the experimentation is optimization okay i because my customer now loves and like my product 
I don't have to create any feature or anything which actually take my customer back. Okay, I have to experiment optimization. Okay, I have to optimize my cost. If I am today create, let's say if I am let's say if if I am investing hundred rupees right on my application to get order of let's say two uh, hundred rupees, let's say I have to optimize that cost, right? Both ways I have to optimize. So I have to work on the optimization side, right? So finding product market fit should be the first priority of any startup or any product manager. Okay. Uh, here startup is product manager. Product managers are the CEO of your own product, right? You will decide, you know, your customer better than anyone, right? You will understand the basic needs and demands and requirements of your customer. You will understand the minor of the minor problem statement of your customer. If you don't know, go back to your customer. Don't start. Okay. Go and understand the understand the life of your customer boss what are you facing why you are not uh, doing these things right if you have tried what is the problem statement etc okay so this is the first step so we have spoken about product solution fit market fit and scale so these are very high level terms right now to understand more about now we are going more deeper into the market fit segment okay uh, we have spoken about what is market fit right product market fit means uh, being in good market with a product that satisfied that market, right? So these are the same things which we have spoken just now, right? Uh, now everything, whenever product market fit comes, your customer is on the top priority, right? Because at the end of the day, if your product is if your product is not acceptable by your consumer, means there won't be any market fit. Then there might be a situation there won't be a product solution fit also. If it is not accepted by your uh, customer, right? So that's it. Uh, what we need to have a product market fit. We simply need a traction, right? Traction. What is traction? Traction. Traction means we want consumers. We want people to use. We want people to act on it, and we want people to give feedback to us, right? So in this whole journey of product market fit, there are two three segments, so in, and we use. Uh, there are a lot of frameworks which we use to validate uh, product market fit also, product solution fit also. In this session, we will cover a couple of uh, frameworks also. I have tried to keep uh, things very simple so that we can understand how these frameworks also work. Where we will validate business also, where we will validate a product also. So that whole segment is uh, there. So coming back, what we need is traction. If my product is ready, I want simple my customer to use. If product is good, they should give me a green signal. If the product is, let's say, not that good or it uh, requires a feedback, then I should be in a condition to accept the feedback number one. And then based on feedback, I should prioritize that boss. Uh, we should do these changes in the product or maybe these things are not working for my customer or my customer is looking for something else which we have not created. So that is also a thing. So we have a pirate matrix framework. Okay. So uh, it's, let's, I will not complicate this. This is one of the framework where we speak about uh, acquisition. So we have AARRR acquisition, activation, retention, revenue, referral. First of all, I'll tell, the, I'll tell you the hierarchy. This is nothing but the customer life cycle of your product. First of all, the customer is acquired. Right. A customer come and register on your website or application. Let's say that's a, that's an onboarding. Then there's activation. Okay, I have logged in on your registered on your website or application. Now I have started using it or not. That's the activation, right? Or I have used it or not. Right. Then there's a retention. I have just registered, logged in, registered, uh, registered and logged in. I have just came on your landing page. I dropped. I never came back. Second customer comes on your platform every day or maybe in a, in a period right there's a retention so retention all retention also comes with a time frame right what is your retention ratio a lot of people tell ki my retention ratio for next for two months is x for six months is x for one year is a y right so retention the revenue is something whatever my product is actually topping it as a revenue Hey, a customer is using my platform, my product, and on behalf of that, I am getting a premium 
uh, I am able to create a premium or not, right? From that same customer is my revenue. Then there is a referral. The referral is something where word of mouth and other things work, where a customer says, but boss, this product is really nice. Why don't you try this product to your friends and to your newer ones, right? So then the referral works, right? For product market fit, we will, before product market fit, we have to take care about retention and revenue also, right? Uh, activation, acquisition, uh, after product market fit also we can go. Before product market fit, retention and revenue is very important. Retention means before I will create any, any single penny from this platform, I should ensure that my customer should retain and stay on the platform. There has to be something for the customer. If I'm actually really solving, solving anything for the customer, uh, there should be something which is a retention factor. If the customer is engaging on your platform, if he or she is staying on your platform, coming back to your platform, then only you can actually uh, create a loop where you can actually plan something to serve as a serve to a customer and he or she can pay a premium against. Right. So retention and revenue are two very important things which you have to think before product market fit. Because product market because at the time of product market fit, your customer, there will be certain customers who will see that, okay, you are giving me a subscription of 1000 rupees, but someone is giving me a subscription of 800 rupees, right? Why would I, do, why would I adopt you? Right. Uh, I love landing on your page because you have nice options, but I want to purchase this same thing from a different company because they, they are paying me, they are, uh, they are actually charging me less. Right. This happens in e-commerce, right? Generally it happens in e it happens in e-commerce, right? So retention and revenue is a very important and retention with respect to revenue is also very important, right? So we, they have a deeper relation, uh, moving ahead. So guys, we'll, uh, we'll take questions in the end. Don't worry. You can try, uh, you can keep your questions in the chat and we can go, uh, at the end one by one. Uh, don't worry. Uh, all the answers will all the questions will be answered if you have any question uh, traction matrix is directly proportional to value matrix uh, if your traction is there if the customers are coming if engagement is happening on the platform you are 100 percent creating a value again that depends what type of value you are creating is it a negative value or a positive value okay so traction is important right so nothing is negative in product management uh, Everything is a feedback, right? It depends. A product manager has to be very, very open-minded uh, in terms of taking feedback, in terms of implementing, in terms of understanding customers' needs and requirements, right? So, so when it comes to retention, your value created is actually greater than captured value, right? Uh, captured value is something. Let's say I have, um, let's say I have generated two thousand rupees today from this product or 20 lakh rupees for a month this is a captured value but there's a value which is created right so zomato if i talk about uh, uh, why zomato because it is very easy to understand that this, this is just an example uh, I'm not talking about any numbers which i have referred to zomato etc this is very example based discussion which i have taking uh, they have a beautiful experience and they have a beautiful journey. They have a lot of things for the customers. They change their, uh, they change the menu, et cetera, for the restaurant, right? Uh, they have so many options and features for a customer. So there's a retention factor because they and engagement also. So they have created a value around it, right? A customer come, a customer search for a restaurant, do a lot of, uh, you can filter by cuisines also, you can filter by, uh, 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 what do you say, uh, amenities, etc. also, right? You can search by other things also, you can directly search by dish also, right? So there's a value around it, right? Customer do not have to think, right? So that value is very important, right? Uh, then then you know that okay changing their behavior around so how the customers are actually changing their behavior once the customer are retaining on your platform first day my customer when he, he or she came he was let's say ordering biryani from my platform but now from last three months this customer is more sticking towards let's say um let's say salads okay so the behavior of my customer is also changing i can i can i can sense that i can see that right from last six months this customer has this type of orders right i i have created a value there 
now i understand my customer right actively so the, the customers are actively actively using my product towards an extended period of time that's retention retention is not like i have created my product today customer landed today customer is using used customer has used for next 3 days and gone this is not traction this is not retention sorry right retention is something you have decided a period let's say i will decide a period of let's say a year averagely how many time this customer come back to my platform averagely right let's say averagely 20 time all my customer come on my platform right averagely how many of them pay uh, do order right and averagely what is the revenue which we are actually creating per order right so this is something where you actually exchange some something of value more than money time attention effort social currency etc right because you have created a value here revenue is something where you are actually getting paid right where you where you are actually captured value is more than cost of delivered value right i have delivered you uh, i have created a service for you which which will help you to order something right online and my delivery boy will actually come come at your place whether it is raining whether it is uh high in sun right uh this delivery boy will come to you will deliver the uh, fresh food to you at your home premises right this is a service right i have created a value out of it right and i am charging for it let's say right so i have a business model that is working and the captured value is now more than cost of delivery because i know zomato will also take order of 200 rupees also 200 rupees also i don't have for 200 rupees uh, food i don't have to uh, step out of my home premises right so i have created i have a captured value which is more this is more then before product market fit there are a lot of things to work lot and lot of things right uh, optimize the fast learning and pivot if required for new markets right problems or solutions right uh, let's understand this first then we will move forward before product market fit you there might be certain cases where you have to change your product uh, when i say change your product means uh, you might be you might change you might have to change the solutioning part of it you might have to change the problem out of it uh, you might have to again rework on the problem solution fit of it, out of it maybe right because a lot a lot of time while you are solving a problem someone has solved it already they have solved it beautifully you are creating it again you are doing something from scratch won't work so you have to pick the signals from market rightly at right time so again you have to experiment and fail and learn right if you have experimented you will fail you will learn and next next time you will change in your product right and all these experimentation experimentation failure learning everything comes from one per, from one segment which is customer to understand your customer you create a version asap go to your customer deliver the deliver this to customer take feedback and very quickly do changes whatever the feedbacks are again basis prioritization and other things right but at the end of the day this is the cycle which will help you optimize your product right uh, and you have to be very fast in this whole process because if you take to okay i have got a feedback today i will take two months to change right but in two months whole market will pivot whole market will change right earlier earlier we were only having zomato now we have swiggy now we have uh, blinket also which is a zomato product but we have now uh, zept also right so com market and market is running really really fast every second day there is a new competition coming small or big that doesn't make that doesn't matter right but as a product manager you have to be very quick in terms of prioritization action and delivering to your customer but boss my customer has my customer is requiring this i want to deliver it asap and asap doesn't mean two months three months four months right if you are delivering anything in next two months it is full of waste why i am saying waste because in next two till this journey of two months your customers problems problems will change might be he or she will get more good uh, options uh, in terms of solutioning right and new problems will also occur at the same time so there so you will get a lot of learning in this whole process let's go so let's speak about one framework 
So two frameworks basically. One is a lean product process, and second is a business model canvas. Okay. These two pro these two frameworks works very closely around them. These are coupled together. Okay. If you are doing these two things, you will get essence of entire product market fit. Also, you will get entire essence of product uh, solutioning fit and everything. Right. So lean product process focuses around problem solving. It's more towards problem solving. What problem I am solving? What is a customer doing? Right. What, what my journey? How my journey is? How's the experience is? What my customer is telling about it? What What should I do next? Right. Then business model canvas, which focus around the selling as selling a specific product. Okay. What is my business model? What is a subscription charge I am actually expecting from my customer? Will it fit to Will it fit with respect to the industry or not? Will it fit to the competition or not? Uh, what type of products I am selling, right? Whether I'll be able to sell them online or not? Just example. So you have many use cases. Uh, so we'll, so let's start with lean product process first. So so don't see the left side of the slide. Only focus on the right side of the slide. So we have a simple pyramid. Okay, uh, we have a simple pyramid where we have so we have we have a top section. Top section includes product thinking, product things. Okay, how to define a product, how to build a product for solving users need and key problem. Bottom part of this whole uh, pyramid is the market, right? Market or you can say the problem space. Okay, what is my what is the customer's problem? What customers are telling, right? What market is telling to me, right? To solve, etc. Right. And then in mid of these two, we have product market fit. Okay, the gap between two. Okay. So let's start from market first to understand, and then we'll go subsequently. In, so first is target customer. You have to understand the target customer, which we have already spoken. Then there are underserved needs. Okay. What are, the, what are the needs of my customer? What are the problem statements of my customer? I'll prioritize it first, right? I'll prioritize, I'll focus on them. The, so this is the this is one state of it. Once this one state is done, I will go to third state. Now I'll create a value proposition. What will be my value proposition? For, for uh, uh, an application like Zomato or Swiggy, the val first value proposition, the core value proposition is online food ordering and delivery. This is my core proposition, right? I have to stick with my core proposition. After this, I will create n number of things, n number of features in my application or product, right? So let's say Zomato has cre Zomato created a feature. Uh, I hope you have heard of or not. Zomato Legends, right? Where you can actually order anything from different city, right? Uh, Recently, they have actually, I think, uh, disabled that because there was a problem, uh, product market fit issue, right? Uh, I hope you can read it, uh, read about it uh, more on Google, right? If I'm not wrong, yeah. So you have to create a value proposition. Then there is a feature set. Uh, what features I will have? I I am not ready to take hundred features in one go. I will go with two features or three features. Let's say very important, very core proposition oriented features. I will take and I'll take feedback from my customer. And fifth, the UX experience is very user experience is really, really important thing. Today is the era and experience revolves around everyone, right? If the experience of WhatsApp was not that simple that you just have to search number of your uh, name of your friend on at WhatsApp and just start chatting, right? Everything around experience, right? Then WhatsApp was not very much WhatsApp was not made uh, to adopt by the customer very quickly, right? So the experience part is really, really important. And once these things are reached, you go and test with customer again and again. Once I say again and again means once you will start reaching at that stage where this gap will start reducing. Okay. Once your gap, this, this gap will start reducing and there will be a state coming where this this negligible gap right then there is a product market fit clean signal right my core preposition my feature experience everything is aligned with my customer and their problems i am 100 percent solving that problem i am also getting uh, revenue out of it and customer is also happy right this whole that that 
that first slide of uh, uh, a stool, right? You have seen, right, with the three leg, right? All three things are in place, right? Market is good, product is good, customer is also happy, right? That's product lean process, which we, which is revolved around customers only. Okay. I every time go to my customer, I validate those things. Customers give me feedback. I immediately go to uh, customer give me feedback. I immediately go to value proposition changes or feature set of changes or experience changes. I do this and I again go to customer. Then let's speak about a business model canvas, right? So if you're solving a right problem or not, or using, so the, uh, for that, we use a business model canvas, okay? This canvas will help you to understand or to derive whether you are solving a right problem or not. Okay. And this model have everything. Uh, I have a, a I, I'll speak, I'll speak about this in detail also. Let's, let's start in detail. So this whole canvas, this have a template. Okay. So this template have several sections. First section is problems. You write top three problems. So a customer will come to you and you will have n number of problems, right? You need to prioritize. What are the three top problems my customer has, right? Then again, you do ideation with the, with the team and customer. What are the top three solution you can provide right? of each problem? Obviously. Then what is your unique value proposition, right? Unique, my USP, or my unique preposition is, let's say at the time of, in terms of Zomato and Sugi, as our first product was, I am creating an online ordering system. This is my first level USP. And then I will evolve with my features, right? Uh, you have to be very clear in terms of your value proposition. You cannot say, I will create a, uh, I will create a HRMS. It's a very, very vast and bigger term, right? You have to be very specific, right? Uh, why you are different from others this has to be very clear right uh, then unfair advantages right uh, which cannot be copied by anyone right so for example today in today's era experience is something which revolve it can be copied but the same experience if you copy right uh, it can be dragged easily right or the value which you are creating for the customer is something which cannot be copied right so value is something right how this value is created etc you have to say then customer segmentation i have spoken so much about customers now we will speak more about customers we will dive into customers you have to categorize your customers who is your target first of all who is your target customer what type of customer it is right you have to uh, do deep dive into the customer's life also you have to segregate you have to create customer groups also then you have to create key matrices right key activities you will measure how many customer came how many orders came what is the retention ratio right uh, etc what are the channels of my customer whether my whether, whether my customer is coming from a, a swiggy zomato kind of a platform to my website or or on my application or from Blinkit, he or she is particular, uh, my customers are purchasing that particular product, right? Uh, or what is, what is the kind of product or I, or I have a simple application and a website, a customer can simply come on my website and these are channels, right? Then you have cost structures and revenue streams. Cost structure is something where you create cost, where you actually analyze the cost. My, there is a customer acquisition cost. Okay. I spent 2000 rupees on marketing every day let's say and i get two customers one of them orders right what is my customer acquisition cost right distribution cost hosting since every since the products are uh, these days most of the products are digital products most of the products right obviously uh, an operational cost and uh, uh, offline things are there but things are hosted somewhere right data is there data privacy is there servers cloud storage everything is there right so hosting people etc all these cost structures are there then revenue streams what is the revenue model of this product right what is the lifetime value of i create so for example pranshu has ordered let's say uh, worth two lakh rupees last year from zomato and customers like pranshu right averagely they have created let's say four lakh rupees uh for the company right lifetime value for 
for pran uh, for pranshu is 2 lakh rupees let's say right revenue gross margins are very important right gross margin is something something is ordered for let's say 500 bucks right after deducting everything what is the final version of final amount as a company or a product is actually cre value creating right so in the left hand side of this whole template we have product related things problem solution key matrices value proposition in the right hand side we have more of a market things right unfair advantage customer segment channel revenue stream if you write all of these things here and all things are matching and syncing towards right then you then you can actually conclude what are then you can actually pick because uh, then you can actually pick the right problem and the right business model around it i have written three problem statement but the revenue streams are not there so for two of them let's say i will solve the third one right for the for other three for the other two i don't have a usp i don't have a unfair advantage i'll prioritize the third one okay so this will give us sync towards each other all of the segment should match so should match means should be alignment should have a alignment with each other so that is important so that is business model canvas so in this slide lean product process we have taken care actionables to achieve product market fit only customer and in this model and framework i have focused more on the business side keeping product together that my product whatever i am creating whatever problem i am solving right is it actually creating a value out of it or not value both for customer and for the company right then what are the next steps right uh, this is done model and everything is done i have picked one problem statement my business model is also there my unfair advantage is also there i have usp i have customers also now you go and break customer persona to create a customer persona you have to create a customer persona uh, so we have spoken about customer persona in very much detail in our last session you can go and explore uh, so customer persona where you create where you create and keep track of behavior and understanding and goals of your customer what are the key activities of customer uh, towards the existing sol solution also what are their actions and feedbacks right what is my customers uh, what my customer look like simple terms right uh, then you have to identify use cases right uh, you have to identify uh, problems motivations and expected outcomes also right i will i have this problem i will solve like this and my customer life will change like this right you should have those use cases also basis you have to very quickly create an mvp minimum viable product which can actually very quickly ship to the market once it is shipped you take customer feedback which is very important so this cycle is very important uh, we have spoken a lot about customer feedbacks right feedback is nothing you go and touch you act, uh, not touch sorry <laughs> you go and discuss the feedback with your customer don't wait that your customer will write about your feed will write about something right you have to go and connect with your customer right you have to conduct customer interviews okay this is very important aspect what happens here is so suppose let's say 10000 customers are using your product right now you don't know what is the response of my, of my product uh, individually from the customers right i have custom i have created a customer groups also okay so suppose i have six seven type of customers there are certain customers who are less tech savvy then there are certain customers who are uh, ready to adopt new technology then there are certain customers who are very uh, very much resistive when it comes to new technology adoption right uh, they don't want to use something anything new Right. let's say these are the three category of customer right go and speak with them specifically see the problems you think right there 100% you will find a gap right because there will be certain problems which you think customer would have and then there will be certain new problems also which customer will tell you about that boss uh, i was having this problem also you have solved this but this is this is something which is not solved or maybe whatever you have solved right let's say for example let's say uh, as a customer i 
as a customer let's say zomato discussed with me i'll i'll simply say to zomato is boss uh, it's a very uh, layman layman question understanding point boss you anything which i order it takes 40 minutes to reach is there a pro, is there a solution where i can actually get something in less than 15 minutes from zomato itself only right this is an open question from a customer open question right don't go from the don't go on the thinking process from the zomato side or okay boss a fresh food cannot be delivered in 15 minutes right that is something else right but this is a pure customer oriented uh, statement right i want food in 15 minutes i want food in 10 minutes what you can do for me right again you will go and prioritize right so think you have to think holistically right you have to first listen to your customer what my what value my customer require whether that value which is required is required by one customer or from everyone for everyone right so that is something uh, we we need to uh, understand so you have to conduct interviews with the customer you go and discuss about each and every click of your product how how much you like this particular screen uh, you clicked on this button or not have you seen this feature or not what is your reaction when this feature uh, works like this right do you love this feature or do you like this feature or not if you have any feedback with respect to this icon also this button also uh, is my content in is my content which is uh, available on my screen is user friendly or not you have written so many so much content on your application let's say uh, and that content is very much jargon oriented right customer is not able to understand very formal understand right so you have to go and understand all the things and you have to keep this in mind you are not selling then you are not selling anything to customer at that point when you, once you are taking that interview right so this is not this is not a sales tactics uh, you are you don't have to motivate your customer to use your product that time in the in these customer interviews you just have to go and listen to the customer right try finding more problems right which customer feel right identify what are the alternatives they have right now this is also very important let's say example the same example let's say 15 minute order delivery uh, i have a uh, okay if i as a product manager if i spoke about i spoken about i have spoken to this customer this customer might have given me a statement that boss zomato se order karte hain to it takes 40 minutes by i but i have an auntie in my kitchen uh, sorry in my society she delivers the food in 15 minutes right uh, this is something happening in my life as a customer right so you have to understand these problems and what are what are the things they are facing and how they are actually solving this problem for me but i want food from zomato because I like that restaurant and I like taste of that restaurant. But this auntie also helped me getting food in 15 minutes. Right. So customer interviews play a lot of very, very important role in this whole exercise. Right. You have to understand it really, nice, really well. And every time you have to derive, you have to, you will derive something new in these interviews only. Right. Uh, these customer interviews are not only discussions with customer. You have to break this whole interview into a different level of sentiments also i will speak i will take feedback from a different way to a customer who is tech savvy i will take feedback from a different perspective from a customer who is actually not so tech savvy who don't want to actually use my platform so i have to understand the customer psyche also i have to understand the customer grouping also and then with that sentiment i have to go to the customers right so you should get some beta customers very important beta customers in some are those customers who are the first users of your application right and you should have you should have category you should categorically create your customers right you should figure out okay these are my first thousand customers i will work with these first thousand customers i will create groups of these customers okay so we have five groups here okay to understand things very easily we have five groups once first we have innovators innovators are something you are very much tech savvy right second are early adopters who like who like tech things and they are very much quick adopters right early majority they are little bit resistive okay if i if i'll get something new i'll try else i'll not 
लेट मेजोरिटी एज समथिंग दिस इज न्यू टेक अपडेट ओके आई विल थिंक टू यूज अबाउट इट राइट एंड लेगार्ड्स आर सम लेगार्ड्स आर समथिंग दिस इज अ न्यू टेक्निकल थिंग आई एम नॉट यूज्ड टू ऑफ यूजिंग दिस आई वोंट यूज इट राइट सो यू सो द सो दिस फिफ्थ सेगमेंट इज रियली रियली टफ सेगमेंट राइट where they are not at all giving you feedback also they won't give you feedback also there might be condition they won't be they won't entertain you also right but these are the people if you convince them or if you let them, if you make them use your product if you have created such nice product right it will be a real a real winning situation for you so create beta customers create customer segments right this is an example this is just an example of product where you have uh, evaluated your customer groups and you have created them right i have 2.5% of innovators i have 13.5% of early adopter customers then 34 34% of early and late majority customers right then we have 16% of lagards lagards also right now i know my customers i know the behavior of my customer i know the definition of my customer in terms of behavior in terms of uh, uh, background in terms of likes and dislikes etc right in terms of categorization that is also very important uh, once you pivot you have to deliver value before revenue if you haven't delivered a value right the revenue won't come so value matrix is really really important we have discussed about arrr in earlier slides right so it's the same thing acquisition activation retention revenue referral if i if i will not create a awesome experience if i will not create an awesome value for of my product no one will use it no one will use it right and customer if the customers are not using it how can i actually think of revenue referral etc right so we have to think very wisely how do user find you right it will go on acquisition right how users have a great first experience first hand experience right do user come back or not for retention right how do you make money is secondary thing right do users tell uh, do users tell others about this product or not these all things are secondary first two things are activation do you have great first hand experience or not if you don't have a first uh, great first hand experience then the customer won't come and if the great experience is there and you are solving a problem then customer will 100% come back then it depends on the product and how this uh, and uh, product as well as the pricing and all those things if it is aligned with that then it depends right so value matrix is very very important we have to focus more on creating value before any revenue or all those things because if you have created a value people will be ready to pay a revenue sorry pay a subscription or premium out of it right uh, like 5 years back people were saying netflix is very very expensive post covid netflix changed their pricing structure also right today i am sure like more than 50% of us are having netflix subscription directly or indirectly right so that they, they have created their experience and activation and all the retention so wonderful and beautifully then now the revenue is already following so that we have to uh, keep in mind right? you have to iterate very quick, quickly right customer will give you feedback you will go in interviews right you will discuss with your customer but you will again take 2 months 3 months 4 months 5 months right it will not work you have to iterate very quickly you have to create small small checkpoints small milestone create it go to customer again create it go to customer again right until and unless you reach to that uh, adoption and acceptance stage where customer says that boss yes now this is this looks around what i am actually solve which i am actually facing problem of, right so iteration is really important uh, because customer problems will remain same there is no guarantee right today i am facing problem i am facing a problem a after two months my problem a will change with to problem b right and this and this way whole industry will change in one or two months so that is really important to iterate quickly right so once when i say iterate quickly go to market go to customer you have to understand your competition also that is also very important because there is something which is which is a 
there is something which is known as market demand right what market is looking for and what people are serving right what is comp- what competition is actually giving right so there is a demand out there or not right you have to understand competition first i am creating something for which the demand is not there right competition is not there high there are high chances you will fail because there is no competition and the demand is also not there right <laughs> don't focus on getting feature parity with competitors my competitor has re- released five features i will also release five features my competitor just have released this feature why don't we have released this feature okay i hope you have seen this kind of trend in a lot of uh, competition com- competitor segments right today if i have i have actually created a service as a competitor tomorrow the same service will be copied and replicated by other competitors and and then they will uh, compete on the pricing this generally happens right so segment you will build everything for everyone segment means you you have to segment your customer you have to segment your problem with respect to customer you have to map them and match them problem a is for category uh, a kind of a customer problem b is for category b kind of customer i will not solve both problems together i will first solve problem a for this category of customer or rather we i will solve a part of that problem which is falling around both customers right which so again this goes to persona Com- understanding customer understanding competition requirement demand going to customers live understanding my customer also and then creating a priority and creating and uh, sorry prioritizing and cre- creating that solution which fits across which solves all problem of everyone so that segmentation is also important and uh, this is very important thing so this is it uh, from my side uh, you can reach me uh, at the podcast also on spotify also now i think we can take questions let me yeah you can ask questions now okay let's see what questions how to prioritize customer and persona okay uh, rehan this is your question uh, how to prioritize customer is something uh, so you have to first understand the problem of your customer okay i have let's say <clears throat> uh, first of all there are two answers of this yeah there are two answers first is if i go as per the process i will first understand the problem statement and i will see what kind of people or what kind of customers are actually facing this problem okay so generally i see number again you have to see data out of it okay so suppose there are three categories of customer category a is facing problem so let's say 80% of the customers in priority in the set 1 are facing the same problem category b faces 60% of people and in third category only 1% of people are facing right so you can again prioritize according to the data data is very important whenever you are prioritizing anything data is important right personas same thing persona to you have to actually create try to create a persona which overlaps all of the customers right which overlap which so so that you can actually create a product which actually solve problem of all of these set of groups of people right so that is important uh, let's see more question average value would be different than a uh, lifetime value yes both are different both are different uh, uh franshu we can ask mohit to unmute and ask his question directly because he has also raised his hand yeah mohit please go on yeah so uh, thanks uh, uh thanks franchu so first question is uh, if we are not focusing on the uh, parity or the feature parity with the competitor uh, we may i mean down the line we may be left behind because the customers will feel that uh, x and x y competitor has more features and we are still i mean improving features and getting new features would give them a benefit so, right so we have to 
I mean, how to understand that? I am not saying. I mean, I understand what you're trying to say that if if you are work you, if you're not able to work on your product on your feature, you are just trying to copy what all features the competitor is having. Uh, that won't be benefit, but we cannot neglect it as well. Yeah. So, so okay. how to find that balance? That okay. So yeah. now we have to. I mean. So Mohit. So there are. So again, let's go step by step. Okay. So number one. I have two features to deliver first, right? Let's say I have planned two features to deliver in this month, right? And then suddenly my competitor creates some, delivered something, something out of blue, right? So as a competition understanding and product pivoting, I will plan for it. Number one, I will try to expedite it at the same time because that's the need of the hour, right? Because that market requires that thing, right? But I will plan it accordingly. I will not say that I will not I will not solve for the earlier two pain points which my customer have, right? And I have the solution over it also, right? So I will plan. So again, prioritization comes here. I am not saying that you don't have to copy or you don't have to do because if you are not doing what market requires, it you will left you will leave you will be left behind, right? So again, the prioritization is really very really important here. What is required by the market, and if you can do it in a lesser time or maybe in that time, keeping the balance. When I say keeping balance, means you just don't create a copy, right? You have something as a USB, right? I'll give you a I'll give you a quick example. Uh, there is a company Shuttle, okay, which provide bus services, okay, uh, which is a commercial building. And then Ola also started this. Ola also adopted this whole segment. Okay. Right. Ola came with the same service, but Ola came with a different USB where you can actually buy Ola Pass. Okay, you can just recharge. You can get a pass using that. You can book any of the shuttle or any of the bus of Ola, or you can use that pass for their uh, normal fleet rides also. Right. So here. Uh, this second company followed the same model, but with a USB, right? So I hope you have got your answer, right? You prioritization that yeah. your balance is required. That is it. That is it. Thank you. Thank you for answering this. Uh, I mean, why I, I asked this question was because Zomato and Swiggy. I mean, Swiggy offered group ordering, and then the next day or the in, in the next two days, Zomato ordered. Uh, sorry, Zomato introduced the same feature. Yeah, that's why I asked that question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The yeah. other question is, uh, I I do understand the uh, what what you meant by retention and revenue, but the created value and captured value. I mean, you you said that the created value should be greater than the captured value. Correct. I couldn't understand that properly. Could, would you would it be possible for you to provide another example for that? Yeah. Yeah. So created, so okay. So created value is something which is not monetary in the first thing. Okay. So suppose, um, let's say Amazon Prime. Let's take example of Amazon Prime, right? Amazon Prime gives me a flexibility to get my order delivered next day. Okay. This is value for my customer, where a customer, whenever he or she wanted to order, next day that product will be delivered to his or her premises next day, right? Now, this is a value, right? I don't care as Amazon. I don't care. My customer will order for 200 rupees, 2000 rupees or 2 lakh rupees, right? I have created a system out of it. Now, my customer, who, whosoever are prime customer will use it, right? And they can get any particular thing in next day. So this is a value which you have created. Now, revenue will follow automatically, right? So created value, all, all the created value should always be greater than captured value in the beginning of your product. Right. I'm not at Swiggy or Zomato or any platform. I'm simply taking a premium service. Right. I'm ordering food. Right. Uh, with Ola and Uber, I am ordering. I am actually booking a cab. Right. But that cab will come in two minutes or three minutes. And there's, a, there's another company whose cabs are coming in 30 minutes. This three minute, com this three minute uh, cab company is creating a value for me. Right. It is saving my time. It is saving my efforts. Right. Anything which save my customers time and effort is having a greater value than other. Right? Great. Great. So, 
so in terms of amazon prime that's the created value you will get the order in the next day and the captured value would be yeah so cap now the captured the value, yes correct the captured value will be let now in this case captured value is a subscription for amazon prime right i will get uh, the captured value is the subscription on amazon prime okay if i take this subscription i can get anything next day along with this there is a complimentary subscription of amazon prime where i can stream videos also right so in in subscription also you can see where uh, the captured value is there they are they are trying to serve you with additional things right not only uh, next day delivery along with that you can get access of a platform where you are having this kind of service also of video streaming so the so you have actually created two way impact to the customer's life right this is it got it thank you so much pranchu right. thank you mohit yeah uh, hi pranchu i hope i'm audible yeah yeah i'm not quite uh, yeah so uh, regarding the the user experience we discussed about so i wanted to know how much of an emphasis is given to it during the the initial stages of product market fit like say the product is not actually like the pms has not yet achieved so at that point of time uh, are we really pushing a lot about the user experience or are we still holding back on those features so if until and unless the product market fit is not met you have 100 as a product person you should question everything you should question experience also because if you will because you are the only one in the system who can check and question right who can go to the you, you who can actually immediately go to customer discuss the same thing you can go to teams right you can actually tell, speak with the team that boss this thing is not working right you can at the same you are at the same time checking the competitors also right and understanding and analyzing what boss this experience is better than better in our competitors journey we are way behind right so unless and until market fit is not reached uh, you can question at every stage at every stage right uh, experience is something which is very very important if you are not working and updating on the experience part you will some 100% you will miss the bus uh, so just a follow up on that uh... would we like to strategize uh, the way we go with user experience because maybe we can use it during the growth stage as well if we are making much more personalized user experience offerings later on once the pms is achieved it might help us you know uh, grab in those customers who are not very uh, eager to use the product so basically the ones who are quite reluctant so by enhancing this user experience during the growth uh, stage would that also be a strategy that uh, you would like to follow see this see it depends frankly speaking it depends but there has to be a benchmarking right there has to be a benchmarking in terms of experience acceptance also right so as we have discussed that there there is a beta customer group right at least there is a, there should be adoption of say 80 90% or 70% of your customer right to to scale it we have a thing nps net promoter score right once you are at the stage of scaling it right then you can work on other things like nps and all those things where you can actually particularly uh, speak about modules right in this module the experience is not good because the nps score is not good right so that is something a tricky part but before uh, meeting and uh, product market fit or at the time there has to be a certain benchmarking which where the experience should be smoother for all set of customers at least for all set of customers if not for all but for but at least for major set of customers and then you can actually scale uh, post product market fit obviously sure 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 so much uh, do we have any other question let me see the chat this one uh, is yeah. created value or tangible value can it be measured uh created value or tangible very important and interesting question uh yes you can so uh yes you can create you can actually measure this 
not as a value but as an impact as a so you can actually uh, me, you can actually uh, measure it number 1 because it save my customers efforts and time okay so effort versus time is a metric if you are actually solving that you can you can actually uh, capture that created value right suppose uh, when when ola and uber were not there i have to actually go one night before to a taxi stand to book a taxi right next day to pick my mom from station to my home right this was a tedious process one let's say 24 hours was the process right and at the and at the last moment driver has a full right to cancel that cab also right now ola and uber has done a problem solutioning where it happens in just 2 minutes in next 2 min- in just 2 minutes i will book a cab driver details will be with me and i will share that details with my mom also right so if you have solved this particular thing time versus uh, effort right then this is the metric metrics are important uh, where we can find your previous session you can find our previous session on pm school pm school youtube channel obviously uh, you can find more information on my spotify channel also but please refer pm school uh, we have a we uh, last time we had a detailed session a nice one uh, lot many questions were asked uh, so yeah you can also refer pm schools linkedin uh, last session linkedin uh, event also there also a lot of people asked a lot of question we answered there also so you can use that yeah, yeah. thanks friends yeah okay we have an interesting question how does one become a good product manager is it the one who comes with the best solution to problem and create good answer good product manager is someone who fails very quickly there is no definition of a good product manager uh, my friend uh, no one is a good product manager right if you if you fail quickly you will learn quickly if you learn quickly you will build good right uh, so there is no de- as such inf- good information uh, good uh, definition of a good product man- uh, no information of good product manager uh, you should always think from a customer centric point of view uh, generally what i generally what i do is i always think from as a customer first right for for example if i am actually creating a, a any particular solution right i will first think from customer angle whether i will use this product or not what usp i will see in this product right suppose today today if i have got a problem statement that i have to create a uh, a website where, or an application where uh, where anyone can actually uh, car- do carpooling let's say right simple two three problem statement will come in my head is number one it should not be expensive than ola and uber right number two i should get something in my vicinity around right number three uh, uh, there should be safety and security right these things are these these are simple thoughts as a customer right now you think as a product so now, as a product manager these are the first two three things right you heard from customer now you start your processing right now basis you start so uh, please stay connected with your consumers uh, there is nothing like a good product manager or a bad product manager uh, there is always an experience and a learning which is with everyone uh, if you use your learning wisely if you learn from your customers quickly uh, you will do things quickly and uh, fast movers everyone appreciate uh, appreciates fast movers right so that is important but yes do not uh, do not lose your prioritization and customer pro- solutioning uh, just to match the pace that's it uh, do we have any other question not on the chat guys okay. do we have any question Yeah, I think uh, I think we're we're good for the day. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So thank you, thank you for sharing such insights. I hope now everyone know how to actually align their product with the market needs. And yeah, looking forward to more sessions. And thank you everyone for joining. Thank you, thank you so much, Prashant, for this informative session. Yeah, thanks. It was very great. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.